absolutely no way to have access to a service animal if you say anything. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, I know that's an argument. It's just do I take away that? Check. Where are you finding us? Like, where are you? Finding I guess I can yeah. instead of just saying yeah, it's reasonable, just just put it the language yeah. of reasonable and necessary. Oh, and the externship box. All right. Yeah, is on, the on. council for the or the park first? Pellet. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I didn't print my stuff off, so. That's yeah. fine. I trust in your ability to create an app. Do we just kind of time off the ball? Um, I don't have any way to find you. So if somebody's in cell phone, they're willing to use yeah, for this purpose, that'd be great. Do you want to? Do you want time, or do you want? Me too. Carry time. Uh, uh, Jake's gonna do it. That works. I am Charles Gass, appearing on behalf of the appellant. Our client, Mr. Lindner, suffers from muscular dystrophy and is disabled as defined under the ADA. It requires the use of a service dog for stability. In early September, Lindner began to visit his friend Claire Hennings at the Parkview Terrace Apartments where she resides. It was Parkview Terrace policy that tenants were allowed to bring guests to the pool. Hennings and Lindner used the pool to do exercises that were suggested to Mr. Leonard by his physical therapist. In October of 2012, the apartment complex manager sent a letter to Leonard that his service dog was no longer welcome at the apartments. The manager never witnessed the dog causing any disturbances. The apartment complex has discriminated against the service dog owner based on his disability and unjustly refused him privileges granted to able-bodied members of the public. The Parkview Terrace apartment pool is a public accommodation because it is a place of exercise or recreation, and its use is a privilege offered to the public. Parkview additionally refused to reasonably modify its no animal policy and allow Littler's service dog, even though such modification was necessary, and would not fundamentally alter the nature of the pool. I will discuss whether the, how the pool at Parkview Terrace Apartments constitutes a public accommodation. My co-counsel will examine how the proposed modification was reasonable and has not fundamentally altered the nature of the facility. The pool of Parkview Terrace Apartments is a public accommodation. I would first like to basically return to the theme of the ADA and that it should be interpreted liberally. We can see this from congressional intent as well as subsequent court cases defining the matter. The reason why the ADA is meant to be construed liberally is that it is meant to ensure full and equal enjoyment of privileges that are afford to afford the broadest feasible access for those with disabilities. But don't those privileges have to be afforded to the public first? Yes, and in this case, that is kind of what the case will turn on, is it brings me right to my second point, which is that Lindner was discriminated against when he was denied equal enjoyment of the privilege of using the pool as a guest of the tenant. So like you said, this privilege has to be offered to the public in a sense. Here, there's two ways to use the pool at Park for Terrace Apartments, either one being a resident or two being a guest of a resident. Now, in this particular case, if Claire Hennings, a resident of the apartment complex, invited one individual, uh, someone who's not disabled, an able-bodied member of the public, and invited David Lintner, one person would be able to have full access to the pool, and the other, David Lintner, disabled, would Is not be able to. Is there any way to determine who has actually been invited into the pool area? I mean, isn't, isn't it technically still a limited group of people who can use it? I mean, it's not like they've just put a sign out to the public saying, hey, come on in. That is true, but the fact that there does exist a restriction doesn't mean that it's still not open to the public. Uh, there was a particular case uh, regarding a arena in Oregon or a stadium where individuals leased private arena suites, and the court found that those suites were public accommodations because whoever leased them would thus be inviting 
specific invitees or guests, members of the public, to come and join him. So the fact that they the power call has put that restriction that you must know a member or resident to be there doesn't doesn't affect the fact that you have one member of the public who would be able to enjoy the full access and benefit of it, and another member, David Lintner, who would not because of this policy that Parkview's basically discriminated against him. In order to be a public accommodation, doesn't it have to affect commerce in some way? Uh, that is true, and the pool affects commerce in two ways. The first being that residents pay their monthly rent, and a portion of that will go to the maintenance and upkeep of this pool, and they also pay for the right to be able to bring guests to that pool. Additionally, the pool can serve as an attractive feature for the apartment complex, thus bringing in residents that might not otherwise be interested in the apartment complex uh, and uh, directing commerce through that throughout route as well. Councilor, I'm having a hard time seeing how this has been open to the public if it's still given to a limited group of people. The, the, again, I would reiterate that there, yes, there is a restriction that you must know someone who is a member, but any member of the public can be invited. There's the Parkview Terrace Department sets no restriction on who someone may bring, only that they be invited. My next argument is that the pool is a public accommodation because it is a place of exercise or recreation covered by the ADA. The, in the ADA itself, it lists specific enumerated categories of what qualifies as a public accommodation. And one of those enumerated is a place of exercise or recreation. Now, if we continue with this liberal interpretation, a pool would certainly qualify under a place of exercise or recreation. But if they wanted it to be included in the enumerated exceptions, wouldn't they have just written pool in it? They wanted the ADA to be all-encompassing and be able to fit a variety of establishments. So instead of creating an exhaustive list, they created these categories to be liberally interpreted so that courts could pull in whatever facilities um, made sense when uh, someone who'd been disabled was discriminated against. Additionally, in the actual congressional intent, two minutes left. In the actual congressional intent, when writing the ADA, uh, Congress found that a swimming pool would specifically fall under the category of a place of recreation, um, or sorry, of place of exercise or recreation. Uh, they also found that a video arcade, a golf course, and several other places would fit this qualification. Uh, at this time, I would ask the court to reverse the trial court on the issue of whether or not the public, the, the pool at the Parkview Terrace Apartments qualifies as a public accommodation as a matter of law, and I would like to reserve my remaining time for rebuttal. Sorry, I know I was supposed to ask for that at the beginning. I forgot. That's about six minutes on the head. So I got one left? Yeah. A uh, minute and a half left. Yeah. So just to verify, it's cgass 15 .edu, edu You got it, yeah. And J-R-U-S-S-C-O-L. 15. Still feels really weird typing 15. <laughs> Josh Ruskell, and I am representing the appellant, Alan Littner. Mr. Littner is a man afflicted with muscular dystrophy who seeks only the same privileges from the Parkview Terrace Apartments, which they grant to able-bodied members of the public. He seeks to require the Parkview Terrace Apartments to accommodate his disability as mandated specifically by the ADA. Specifically, he seeks a reasonable modification to Parkview's policies, allowing him to bring his service animal to the pool area where he visits as a guest. Mr. Lintner's muscular dystrophy is an incurable degenerative disease which afflicts him in a variety of ways, significantly hindering his ability to walk and results in, in his frequent falling. On the advice of his doctors, he procured a large service dog, a German Shepherd named Hercules, to help maintain balance while he walks, as well as to help him get, him up, get up when he falls. Hercules has become a trusted companion that accompanies Mr. Lintner everywhere due to Mr. Lintner's significant needs. Naturally, Hercules accompanied Mr. Lintner to the Parkview pool when he visited his guest of Claire Hennings. Although Hercules did not help Mr. Lintner to enter or exit the pool, 
or to complete his exercises in the pool. Hercules just waited quietly by the door and never bothered other pool guests. However, without ever speaking to Mr. Lintner about a potential problem, let alone a solution, Parkview banned both Mr. Lintner and Hercules from the pool area. Parkview Terrace Apartments violated the ADA and discriminated against Mr. Lintner by broadly restricting his service dog's access to their premises. Mr. Lintner requested a reasonable modification of their policy, and Parkview failed to demonstrate that such a modification would have altered the nature of its public accommodation. Counselor, refresh my memory. What was the reasonable modification requested? The reasonable modification was to allow Mr. Lintner's service animal, service dog, to accompany him into the pool area. Um, so, first, let's let's talk about the reasonable policy modification request. Um, Congress under the ADA intended to make an affirmative burden on public accommodations so that they would have to take some actions in certain cases so that the disabled could use their facilities. Parkview's failure to consider the requested policy modification or any other modification is exactly the discriminatory behavior Congress sought to remedy with the ADA. Congressional intention under the ADA was to provide the broadest feasible access to service animals in all places of public accommodation to ensure that individuals with disabilities are not separated from their service animals. So if we decide that just allowing the dog into the pool wouldn't be a reasonable modification, what would be an example of a reasonable modification? Well, in this case, there's nothing really short of allowing the dog to accompany Mr. Lintner around the premises. Now, the dog is not accompanying Mr. Lintner into the pool at all. The dog never entered the pool. Um, we're just asking that he be allowed to go as far as the entryway of the pool area so that Mr. Lintner can use the dog. The dog is his companion. The dog is basically part of Mr. Lintner for purposes of the ADA. Um, we believe that um, it's necessary and reasonable to allow the dog to go that far with Mr. Lindner. Um, through its, the ADA policy, Congress sought to recognize the important nature of the relationship between the disabled and their service animals. To promote the policy that the animal should be treated basically as part of the disabled person and indistinguishable, similar to any other medical device like a wheelchair or a cane. Um, there's no question that Parkview would have been required to accommodate Mr. Lindner's use of any other sort of equipment. And in this case, the dog is, is not a pet. The dog is a medical device which Mr. Lindner needs to suit his, uh, to, to help him alleviate the effects of his disability. Based on this policy, the court should rule as others have and presume that Mr. Lindner's request to be accompanied by a service animal to be generally reasonable. Parkview might need to make, take some steps in order to accommodate this request. And this is, uh, this is what Congress intended by the ADA. Uh, Parkview, for example, might need to explain the presence and harmlessness of the service dog to the other Parkview residents so that they're not, they don't have concerns about safety. At what point should we weigh the concerns of the residents as more important than the need to accommodate a disabled person? Because, I mean, they are the ones paying for access to the pool here, aren't they? They are, that's true, and it's important to protect their rights. However, their rights do not supersede the rights of other guests that are invited. As long as the apartment complex has a policy in which it allows not only residents, but the invited guests of residents, it has to ensure that the residents of the guests, it has to take reasonable steps to ensure that those, those guests uh, who are disabled have the same right to enter, the same ability to enter and enjoy the facility as any non-disabled guest. Um, but I mean, can't Mr. Lidner's friend, who is the resident, who he is a guest of, can't she help him around the pool area? I mean, wouldn't that take care of this whole problem? No, it wouldn't. Um, she can help him around the pool area, and she did every time he went. The issue is that there's nothing for Mr. Lidner to do with the dog. The dog the, his service dog accompanies him everywhere uh, to make sure that he doesn't fall on the way to the pool. Um, and. Therefore, if the dog is prohibited from accompanying him to the pool, it in effect prohibits the dog from coming into the apartment complex at all. There's no place else to leave the dog. Um, I think it, it, another analogy is instructive uh, regarding the alteration of the fundamental nature of the pool, which I, I think is what you're getting at. Um, first of all, the Department of Justice acknowledged that there's only rare circumstances in which the accommodation of a service animal would not be required. And it seems clear that of Parkview Apartments have failed to meet their uh, burden as a, an affirmative defense of proving that this would effect a fundamental 
alteration of the pool. Um, it's inappropriate to allow the misguided and prejudicial fears of the apartment complex residents to override the policy against discrimination. In this case, an analogy. Councilor, what does it mean to, you mentioned that you can't fundamentally alter something. What does it mean to fundamentally alter something? Well, the, in this case, the, the pool is a place of recreation and exercise for its residents and their invited guests. Fundamental alteration would mean that it could no longer serve that purpose as a place of exercise um, and recreation for residents and invited guests. Now, in this case, if, uh, consider the, the situation if Mr. Lintner was Hercules. Instead of having a service animal, Mr. Lintner himself um, had, was called Hercules. He wore a spiked dog collar, he was large, he was imposing, but he never harmed anybody or threatened anybody on the property. Now the court certainly would not allow the, such fears, such misguided emotional fears, irrational fears of the residents to prohibit Mr. Lindner, a person, from entering the facility and it should consider the service animal in the same manner and require some modification. It should not, it should not allow the residents irrational fears to overcome the rights of Mr. Lindner. But doesn't it's kind of fun. Just so you know, I'm actually it's only six or Yeah, I started a minute later. Oh. Um, I would say in a situation like that where you end on that note, I wouldn't even bother to ask for a minute to conclude. You wouldn't? No. Because I mean, I know that we tell you guys to ask for an extension to have that second to conclude, but if you think about the point that you just ended on, you just asked the court to consider the dog just like the person and that this isn't a reasonable it, it's not unreasonable asking them to be considered this way in accordance with the ADA. Right. Ideally would you have that second to wrap everything up? Yeah. But courts don't really like to grant extensions of time mm -hmm. in real life. So I don't want to end it on like no you can't sit down. Right. Yeah. That In that case I would ask for an extension. Well I, I mean I'm saying it's better to end on a strong point than to right. have them deny my request. Right. Exactly. Who's keeping, are you going to keep time for me yeah. too? What are you doing for time signals? I'll give you two and one. Yeah. If you want like 30. 30, yeah. Two. Can you do like 30? <laughs> and just to give you a heads up, um, I think you'll be getting two and a one. Oh, uh, we want to 30? Day up. Oh, then just do two and one. Court. My name is Danielle Worley, joined by Jake Millis, and we are here today representing Sophia Dubinsky in Parkview Terrace. Your Honor, this case is about Parkview Terrace, an apartment complex with a private pool facility. Its usage is intended for use exclusively by residents and guests of those residents. Alan Lindner, appellant in this case, is not a resident of the apartment complex, but gained access through a resident in the apartment who is a friend of his, Claire Hennings. Now, Ms. Dubinsky received a complaint indicating that two-thirds of Parkview Terrace's residents were afraid to enter the pool area and use the pool when Hercules was present. Now, because residents who pay for the privilege of the pool felt uncomfortable when the service dog was present, Ms. Dubinsky delivered a letter to Mr. Lindner requesting that he no longer bring his dog on the Parkview Terrace premises. Mr. Lintner brought suit against Ms. Dubinsky and Parkview Terrace, alleging that the Parkview Terrace pool is a public accommodation under the Americans with Disabilities Act, and that Ms. Dubinsky's action of denying Lintner the ability to use the facility with his service animal was unlawful. But we're going to show you today that Ms. Dubinsky, the owner and manager of Parkview Terrace, has two very important points that should persuade that decision. Now first, the swimming pool in Parkview Terrace cannot be considered a public accommodation because it is located within a private residential facility. Second, swimming pools are not specifically enumerated by the ADA to be places of exercise or recreation and thus cannot be considered as such. Now going to my first point, 
Because Parkview Terrace Apartment Complex is a private residential facility, the swimming pool and workout facilities located within its borders cannot be considered public accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act. This is because Title III of the ADA does not apply to residential areas or amenities not open to the public. But wouldn't you agree that this has been open to the public by allowing guests to come in? But it's a limited guest policy. Now, if we were allowing all guests of the public, if there was some way to pay, that would be very different. But this is for residents and guests who are accompanied by those residents. By no means does this make it, does this um, expand it to any broader view, simply denying um, failing to deny the public access does not open it up to guests. Additionally, there are managers on site who work to keep it within residents and guests of the residents. Um, Winter will not be able to show that this pool is public accommodation because of the residential nature of the apartment complex. Winter has not been able to show. Will, pardon? Will not be able to show or has not been Will able not to be show. able to. Um, because of the residential nature of the apartment complex um, and it has not been able to because of the residential nature of the apartment complex and its status as a private amenity for use by the tenants. Now, if you're looking at um, prior cases that have explored this, you've got independent housing, Lancaster and Burke, and those are all stating the same thing. Residential locations are not like hotels or rooms. <coughs> Um, Parkview Terrace is a residence and it can't be considered, it, you can't expand the ADA to say this is another place of housing because our statutory history indicates otherwise. But shouldn't we consider the pool separately from the residence itself? I mean, it's not like people are swimming in somebody's apartment. Certainly. However, the pool is an amenity for the apartment complex. It is for users of the apartment complex. Similarly, the case of Carolyn, those are member-funded trails. It's funded by the Homeowners Association. And um, Parkview Terrace 2 was not intended for limitless use by the general public. It was for um, residents and for their guests. That is it. And the apartment's lease terms state that guest usage of the pool is limited to respectful use, which is important to consider as well. Now, Councilor, you mentioned that there are there's a policy in place saying that it has to be a guest of a resident, but is there any indication that this policy has actually been enforced? Certainly, there are managers who um, spend time near the pool, Ms. Dabinsky, as well as people she oversees who ensure that this occurs. But there's no key access. I mean, theoretically, Joe Schmo off the street could wander into the pool. But there are supervisors to um, keep that from happening. Now, um, like the case of Carolyn, this, the swimming pool parking terrace is a private amenity intended for use by paying members of the apartment complex. Now, because Mr. Lindner was permitted to use the pool under the guest policy, it's important to still recall that that use was limited by the pool guidelines and those lease terms. Because the pool is provided for the use of paying residents, it should not be required to accommodate all guests. Now moving on to my second point, the swimming pool cannot be considered a place of exercise under the ADA because it is not enumerated as such within the statute. What about your opposing counsel's contention that we should construe the ADA broadly? Um, as you'll see in prior case history, that's not exactly what should happen. Now a location cannot be considered to be a place of exercise or recreation under the ADA unless it says that in the statute and that's for a very good reason. The statute is very specific about various locations that should be considered public accommodation for the purposes of allowing locations like a swimming pool in an apartment complex, like a swimming pool in a home, to be limited to that residential nature and so not be... what limits... I, I mean, we do have... I, at what point do I balance the fact that Congress says you should construe these exceptions broadly because we don't want to list out every example of everything that could ever be this. A, at what point do we say that this fits into the enumeration and it doesn't? Certainly. Look, um, I think the most valuable analogy for this is the Stevens case, which was a cruise ship. Locations within the cruise ship could be considered a public accommodation if they were enumerated as such within the statute. Now, the comprehensiveness of the ADA statutory definition of public accommodation has been interpreted by courts such as Stevens, but as well as PGA and Rendon, that um, only articulated locations should be considered to be public accommodation. And because swimming pools are not included in that statutory definition of a public accommodation, Winter's claim of discrimination by a public accommodation is meritless because this swimming pool is not a public accommodation. Now, the pool and exercise facilities at Parkview Terrace Apartment Complex are not public accommodations. They are paid for and maintained by resident fees, and they're exclusively for use by tenants and guests alone. By no means does a limited guest policy indicate 
indiscriminate use by the general public. In addition, a swimming pool is not specifically enumerated by the ADA to be a place of public accommodation. The statute details explicitly which locations are and are not to be considered public accommodation. A broad construction of such a statement would have tremendous implications for private owners, such as Ms. Dubinsky, which is why this appeal is before you today. Because the pool was located within a private residential area and was not enumerated by the ADA as a place of exercise, this is a private location. For these reasons, Ms. Dubinsky and Parkview Terrace respectfully ask this court to affirm the trial court's decision. <laughs> Was that super fast again? I like just can't tell my speed. Like, I don't feel like I'm rushing. You're timing. You're at 15 seconds. Ugh, butterfly. Okay. Probably the inflections. Like you're using like a breathless kind of inflection that makes it seem like you're going faster than you are. Yeah. You know, it, it just doesn't, it's, it's not that your words are coming in so fast. Though. You can like, understand me? I can understand you, but it just seems like, it feels like you're, you're like... I have recommendations down. for you once we're done. Because okay. I have this big, exact same problem with you do. I'm fast talker. It's I'm too. Yeah. I won a fast talking contest at summer camp three years in a row. High five. So. What summer camp hosts such a... Camp Up Amigo, Ontario, Holla, Algonquin Park. What do you do there? Well, you're one of those Canadians, sir. I... <coughs> I can't. Tom I can't. Cat's racist. <laughs> I think nationalist, oh. if anything. Yeah. Yeah. Now you want everybody to be treated the same, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Josh, why don't you just shut up? J-M-I-L-L-I-S? Ready? Almost. My mom's bringing home barbecue. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you want me to time all the time? Four and four. David, please. Ain't no thing. Okay. I'm Jake Mellis, representing the appellee, the Parkview Terrace Apartment Complex. Alan Wintner and his service dog Hercules gained access to, park, to the Parkview pool area through Claire Hennings, Wintner's friend and a Parkview resident. After seeing this um, service dog in the pool area, two-thirds of Parkview residents indicated that they were afraid to use the pool area when Hercules was present. As a result, Sophia Dubinsky, the apartment manager, requested that Lintner no longer use the Parkview pool if his dog was present. Lintner claims that Parkview discriminated against him when they did not allow Hercules into the pool area and that the ADA requires Parkview to modify their no-animal policy. The Supreme Court has stated that places of public accommodation must make modifications for disabled individuals to allow service animals when modifications are one, reasonable, two, necessary, and three, if they do not fundamentally alter the nature of the public accommodation. First, I'll discuss whether Wintner's requested modification to allow a service animal is necessary. Modification to Parkview's no animal policy is not necessary in order for Wintner to enjoy the same access to the pool use as non-disabled individuals. Wintner is required to be with a Parkview resident to have access to the pool at all times. And on all occasions, Wintner was accompanied by his friend, Claire Hennings, when using the pool area. Uh, Hennings also helped Wintner get into and out of the pool and assisted him with his exercises while he was actually in the pool. While this was going on, Hercules sat by the, by the pool entrance, kind of just waiting to leave, not really doing anything. Um, several cases that indicate um, whether a request of accommodation is, is reasonable. And PGA Rivers Martin, a professional golfer, said that the PGA Tour needed to modify its own golf cart policy to allow him to use a golf cart as it would help him with his leg disability. How is it not reasonable to let a service dog into the pool? I'm not necessary, sorry. How is it not necessary? I mean, theoretically, the resident that he is with could, I don't know, be saving a drowning baby, at which point Mr. Whitner would therefore need the dog in order to help his balance, wouldn't he? He would, yes. But chances are if he's, yeah, that's a good point. I need to work on that, sorry. Um, so in, Distinguishing between PGA when the golfer would be unable to compete 
throw his leg disability here. Um, it's not necessary for Lindner to have his service dog to balance in the pool area when someone else is also accompanying him. Um, sorry, that really stumped me. I'm just thinking about that now. Uh, <coughs> moving on. Even if you do find that this requested accommodation is necessary, Parkview does not need to modify its no animal policy um, if they can show that the modifications would fundamentally alter the nature of such goods, services, facilities, privileges, advantages, or accommodations that the facility offers. Here, the modification fundamentally alters the privilege that Parkview tenants pay for. Parkview tenants pay for the privilege of pool use at their convenience. What does it mean to fundamentally alter something? Fundamentally alter, significantly change, or it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be um, substantially the same as it was before. So here, in this case, Parkview residents, they're paying for the, this privilege of pool use at their convenience. They're paying for um, this pool is going to be safe. They can use it whenever they want. When Hercules is present in the pool area, two-thirds of the residents are afraid to enter the pool area. A lot of them have small kids who they're afraid. But, Counselor, I don't see how that fundamentally alters it. I mean, the pool is still there, right? They can still swim in the pool. It didn't magically turn into jello over they still have access to the pool area. So how does it fundamentally alter the purpose? It, it doesn't fundamentally alter the purpose. It fundamentally alters this privilege that they're paying for. They're paying for the privilege to use the pool at their own convenience. And yes, while they still they can go in there and use it still, the facts, the facts of the case show that two-thirds of the residents are afraid to do this. And as the Supreme Court stated, when looking at a fundamental alteration argument, you need to look at the particular facts at hand and here the facts show that although this dog might not have had or shown any dangerous, dangerous tendencies in the past, the residents are still, still afraid to use the pool area. They're, they're afraid that they have, they have small children. They're afraid that we don't, we don't know what a dog's thinking, what a dog could possibly do. So even if he could be as calm as could be in the past, but in a spur of the moment thing, he might. So why should we accommodate albeit possibly irrational fears of residents, why should we accommodate that in not a disabled person? The, re the, the residents, again, going back to, it, this is not saying that we don't need to accommodate the disabled person, it's saying that the accommodation would fundamentally alter this privilege and significantly change the privilege that these residents are paying to use. The, the apartment complex, they need to act in the best interest of their residents, and their best interest is making sure, or their, their interests are making sure that they're comfortable in their environment, that they're going to be safe at all times. And this, this significantly changes it. It fundamentally alters the, um, the privilege that they're paying for. Whereas this guest, um, Mr. Lintner, although yes, he might be disabled and might be sympathetic towards that, it, it doesn't mean that you should put the rest of the, the actual paying residents in, in jeopardy of um, some sort of safety thing with, with the dog or just, just the whole comfort factor. factor. They pay for to live in um, comfort of their, their own residents. In conclusion, Parkview does not need to modify their no animal policy to accommodate Littner's service dog as it one it's not necessary for Hercules to be present in the pool area, um, for him to have the same access as non-disabled individuals, and two, it fundamentally alters this privilege of pool use for paying tenants. Thank you. I don't know what I'm going to say to that question, by the way. Handrails. Huh? Handrails. Handrails? Didn't the apartment complex somewhere well, in the record say that they yeah. were they had handrails? Yeah. Okay, so hypothetically, what if he's not in the pool? What if he's like outside the pool? Make something he can up. Still, yeah, he's like a drone. He can still use a handrail for balance until she's available. Yeah. We can add a hook for the dog. That would be a reasonable modification, so he can't just wander around. Just come up with something for the hypothetical. Mm -hmm. um, Do you want me to do my rebuttal or do you, I, mean, I don't really care? Oh yeah, I want you to do your rebuttal. Okay. Do they both get rebuttal? Nope. Just check? 
Um, I, you say a minute and a half? Two minutes? A minute and a half? A minute and a half, yeah. Do I say maybe please court again? Okay. In this uh, brief minute and a half, I'd like to discuss by or the appellee's uh, contention that Title III does not apply to a residential facility. Uh, this is correct. It does not apply to a residential facility. The fact of the matter is we're discussing a pool which is separate from this residential facility. Uh, as my point or my uh, appellee, the appellee brought up, the attorney counsel brought up, mixed facilities can exist. She cited the Stevens v. Cruise Ship case where we have private facilities but also uh, public accommodations within that private facility. So although the Title III does not cover residential facilities, we're not discussing a resident facility. Further, Independent, Lancaster, and Burke all discuss private apartments or other things besides a pool. So to give those uh, decisions breadth large enough to encompass this decision, the specific case of first impression regarding a pool would be to give it overbearing weight uh, to find it as a residential facility. Uh, Certainly, we're not discussing a private apartment complex. That definitely is not covered under Title III. But when it comes to a pool, it would be. Again, I would like to just go back and discuss the congressional intent about the pool falling under the statutory enumeration. Uh, in the statutory enumeration, in the congressional um, intent, they specifically said that a swimming pool would be one of the facilities that would fall under a uh, place of exercise or recreation. That was, was that seven seconds? Is that what you're showing? Oh, 15, sorry. Oh, yeah. I didn't know how to do it, so I was like... <laughs> That's fine. Burke right includes out. a pool. No, it includes a common area of apartment complex. It's not with a, a swimming pool. That included a swimming pool. Just saying. And... You let me know. Yeah, it's fine. So I tell it's not what you mean. So you have your own life, right? Danny, give me your own Alright. First of all, you guys all did really good. Um... You, in your conclusion, needed to hit her point two. So, uh, this court should reverse the, mm -hmm. you guys are asking for reversal, right? No, we're asking for reversal. Uh, yeah. You guys are asking for affirming. Yeah. This court should affirm the decision of the court below because this is a necessary, or necessary modification, and or not a necessary modification, and it does not, or it fundamentally alters the nature of the pool, and because this is a private accommodation. Okay. So should I say because this is a private accommodation, but even if you decide it's a public accommodation? It's not a public accommodation. Well, that's... Don't I don't say know. it. Okay. I would just hit it. Is. I would, I would yeah. even, like not in your closing, in the beginning you can say that, but not in your closing. Okay. Um, ideally, you would also, actually, you probably should have done that in your closing. <laughs> okay. You would do what if you should have done it? Like, you like, would have done it and he had a rebuttal to get that closing in there. Overall, you guys did a very good job. I'm going to show you how not to talk best. Okay. I'm just emailing what Charles. I took notes on the Q&A's you did with Carrie, so I emailed those. Oh, two. one other thing. Yeah. You guys all had way too much factual garbage in your arguments. Shorten it up. Yeah. Um, you mean factual from the case or like from prior cases? Uh, from your case. Right. Just bare bones. Yeah. He's disabled. He needs the use of a service dog. He was invited to use this pool. Exactly. Okay. On your side, he was invited to use this pool, but only when accompanied by a resident. Two thirds of the residents were terrified to be in the pool at the same time as Mr. Winner because he had a German Shepherd with a spike collar. Yeah. Okay. Who wasn't tied up anywhere. Yeah. With a spike collar. <laughs> My favorite hypothetical to give to your side, by the way, is, so if this was a golden retriever named Flower with a flat collar, would that be different? <laughs> May it please the court. My name is Carrie Friedman, appearing on behalf of Parkview Terrace. I, along with my co-counsel, will be addressing 
that this court should affirm the decision of the court below because this is a private accommodation and furthermore, because the modifications are not necessary and would fundamentally alter the nature of the pool. Mr. Whitner brought suit against Parkview Terrace when it was determined that the service dog that he used was frightening residents. A letter was sent to Mr. Davinsky, to Ms. Davinsky in this case by residents indicating that this service dog was intimidating residents and prohibiting them from the use of the pool. However, in order to qualify under the ADA, this first must be a place of exercise or recreation, and furthermore, must be determined to be a public accommodation as opposed to a private accommodation. Little pauses. Because you can build things up, but you gotta bring it down. In order to be considered a public accommodation, it must first be a place of exercise or recreation, and furthermore, must affect commerce. This does not affect commerce in any way. There is not a single guest of a resident that is paying a fee in order to use this pool. Because they are not paying fees to use the pool, there is no way that this can be considered to be affecting commerce. If the guests were paying fees in order to use this pool, then this court could hold that it has been opened up to the public. However, without guests paying any fees and only using the privileges extended to residents, this has not been opened up to the public and remains a private accommodation. There you go. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you like, took something I wrote that I've like practiced and then you're just like really, really good and it's like a little annoying how long you are. So it like. took me a really long time to figure out how to add in those little pauses. Yeah, because it sounds really clean. So. And the trick is to kind of figure out where you would start building up steam. And every 10 seconds or so, take pause. Slow down one particular statement that you want to be really effective. So it might be something along the lines of have to affect commerce. Or for you, this is not a necessary modification. Doing those little pauses emphasizes what you're saying. It slows you down. And it just gives you that clean break. Here, all it takes. Same goes for your opening on Saturday. Yeah. Find those places that you want to emphasize. Slow it down. Oh god, I have to fucking write that. Fuck. I was thinking about that too. I'm like, oh bugs. Traffic cards. Consider applying for the ABA appellate team. <laughs> will you be in the trial team trials? Yeah. Yeah, I will. 345. That's my time slot. Oh, I'm early. I picked the first time. I'm at 1030. I'm like, I'm going to get in and out of here and I'll be <laughs> home by 10. <laughs> I wanted to pick an early time. Good but I didn't actually get to the school until like 4 o'clock. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm already like 25 people signed up. It's ridiculous. So, what are you, wait, you're on trial team too. So, I was kind of at it halfway through as an auditor. Yeah. So I was practicing with them, but I wasn't on the team. Gotcha. So I, was, I thought you did the international appellate. Right? Uh, I did the ABA or the, Yeah, the ABA appellate. So yeah, um, that was my competition experience for you. Just out of curiosity, if I didn't make trial team, try <laughs> after the other one? Mm -hmm. Totally. Is it a little bit later? Because I've seen the international one. Right, so Joseph's. But, but um, I haven't seen the ABA one. It's because ABA does their tryouts a little bit different. So what you do is you take the fall class, and then they select from the fall class to do the actual competition. The good news with the fall class is it satisfies your upper level writing requirements. You just take the class. Yeah. Which class? Uh, it's I think it's I think it's listed as ABA appellate team or something along those lines on the registration. Did you like the class? Yeah. Who taught it? I took it with Foster. Um, you can also take it with Hurley. I'd recommend Foster. But you get your problem. You'll generally write a motion with regard to that problem, which is nice because it gives you experience writing a motion, which I'm not going to lie, you're going to spend most of your careers doing if you're a litigator. Uh, and then you write a brief for the problem, and then you do oral arguments on both sides. So it's fun. Yeah, it was great experience. You get a lot of practice writing. My writing improved so freaking much. Yeah. 
And then you don't need to try out for that class. You you can take that class. Pretty much. Um, I think he's still asking people to submit a brief, but as long as it's reasonably well cobbled, like take the writing sample you, you, just you turned in for Austin. Yeah, that would be sufficient ish. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like I, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like a writing sample of that nature. Yeah, yeah. that's what I used. Okay. Cool. It's like so helpful to talk through stuff with you, Carrie. Like seriously, thank you so much for taking time. Happy to do it. Yeah, I appreciate well, it. Well, it really is. Now your time. Thank you. Hey, I love doing this stuff. I love doing mock trial. I love doing color arguments. It's it's my brain butter. Yeah, you're great at it. Um, I sent everybody their comments. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? One thing about like the uh, I think in our previous practice you had said. Like that roadmap piece at the beginning, don't say what you're going to say, just say it. Like, is it, should we say, I'm going to show today that, you know, that, that roadmap piece, or I kind of changed mine to just say. Just say your argument, say you're like, you have two points, right? I feel, I know what you're saying, but I feel repetitive. So, my recommendation, and I did it poorly, kind of off the cuff there. For the first person who goes, I, along with my co-counsel, Mr. Ms. Whoever, will be representing Parky Terrace. I will be discussing point A, my, my co-counsel will be discussing point B. Okay. That way you can hopefully direct their questions. So I'll just add that into one of the... Yeah. Um, like, and, break down all four points. I'll be discussing these two points. Well, I'll say, I'll, do, I'll be discussing whether or not it, the pool constitutes public accommodation, and Mr. Right. Roscoff will be... Uh, how do you say that? Roscoff. Roscoff? That's my thought. Where did the Fs come from? <laughs> Uh, and then Jesus. Jessica will be discussing <laughs> whether this is a reasonable <laughs> modification. Oh, good one. And yeah, I would just leave it a reasonable modification because then you can go That's work That's fine. It. All right, and so then, then I don't really have to give a roadmap. I can just go in. And like, just get into it. Uh, what I would do, do for your roadmap is, uh, my name is Joshua Bruskell, appearing on behalf of Mr. Widner. Yeah. Cool. We'll this is... <laughs> The modification requested by Mr. Whitner is a reasonable modification that is necessary in order for him to enjoy the same access to the pool. And furthermore, this does not fundamentally alter the primary purpose of the pool itself. So I don't have to say it. I, just, I, I don't need to say it in the form of. I, I will first be addressing. No. Um, just give that introduction and say what my first point is. Right. And then go into and, the I mean, you can even make it more conclusive than that. This is a reasonable and necessary modification to the pool. It's little things like that that just takes it to that next level of argument. Yeah, I feel like I need to kind of trim the fat off, right? Because I'm so emphasized on, or so focused on making the points I want to emphasize that I repeat them a lot of times. Um, and I like don't really realize it until I'm doing it out loud and you're asking questions. How many times I'm saying the same things? So. Have you turned in your picture form already? Yeah. I need to do that. It took me so long to find a picture on Facebook where I'm not hammered. Thank you. <laughs> I ended up having to do like a selfie of myself, like sitting at the Lexus table. I love it. Because all of the pictures that I have on Facebook, I'm either holding a drink or drunk. Yeah. yeah. Every single one of me. <laughs> Literally every single one. Oh, that's a lot. Even from Easter. I went through. I don't know. It's hard to take like, my shirt on the last four years. I even went through <laughs> all the pictures that I have on my computer, holding a drink or drunk. Yeah, I had a couple from Israel I could have used that was like too much landscape and not enough makeup on the face. So yeah, that's like, that was the other issue I had. It was like, hey, I'm hiking. This is me on top of a mountain. Yeah. Here's me really sweaty after like hiking in the Judean Hills. Okay, I need to run to my well, locker. Gary, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I, I do really appreciate that. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Alteration. Don't like worry, I will. Part of it is to enjoy it, not just to access it. So if you can't enjoy it, then it's altering it. And then something like, um, like you have to say that they they can exclude the disabled if and maybe it's like if you like this modification would allow the disabled to enjoy it in a way greater than the other residents because they're all scared yeah the dog like something like that like the big thing uh, for you to focus on yeah. is that one of the primary purposes of a pool is exercise and recreation. You can't recreate when you're terrified that a German Shepherd is going to come and bite you. So much your side of recreation. <laughs> and then in the meantime, you're going to focus on the fact that, look, this is a place of exercise and recreation. 
people can still come in, they can still use the pool. He's not affecting the sanitary nature of the pool in any way. The dog is literally lying on the ground next to the pool. Well, I think just like analogies that show like you can't just right. be irrationally scared. And your and analogy just, about the dude named Hercules with the dog collar is spot on. I screwed it up today because I, I, I'm going to take, I, I, I changed it to like, well, what if Linda was Hercules? And that just became confusing. So I'm going to change it back to like, what if she brought another guest? Right. And his, his name, name was, was Crusher. And yeah. he, you know, <laughs> I, I caught myself up in that and it took too much time, but. Uh, I would go with something other than Crusher because you get nerds like you. I'm like, hmm, that's a Crusher, Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I just let my free flag fly. I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to work on that. Thank you. Yeah, no if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Thank you. Yeah, I thought yours was good. That was just interesting. I think it threw a lot of it. I kind of, well, I have to.
Uh, come on, slides. And more. I have a friend in that class. <laughs> oh my god. What's up? Did you get the TV? Nice, awesome. What are you doing tonight? Oh, you're going to the next game? Of course. Alright. Well, no, it's not matter, man. I was just asking. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah, do we, do we have an assignment for uh, the clinic? Just some readings? Yeah, they said they're on an extra aisle. I just didn't know, because they mentioned a writing assignment. I don't know if it was for tomorrow or next Tuesday. So, yeah. All right. Oh, all right, everybody.